How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this fully procedural mossy wood material. So without any further words, let's go and get straight into that. So I'm going to move him over here. Now this is a procedural material. So if you don't want to use a uh, sphere, you can actually use anything you want. You can use the Suzanne model, anything works. We're going to hop straight over into the shading tab and let's get this going. So I'm going to hit a new material. Here we go. So as standard, we're going to go ahead and get a color ramp to start with. So we're going to plug the color straight into the base color. Now the base of this is going to be a noise texture. So let's go ahead and get this noise texture. With the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, it comes with Blender by default. Just go into your preferences and enable it. You'll have, you'll have the noise texture selected. Hit Control T and we are going to use the object coordinate. So let's plug this factor right into the noise texture. So what we're going to do here is get my scale at 0.5 here on the noise texture, a distortion of 2, and detail of 12, and let's bring the roughness in as well. So now we're getting some of the beginnings of a wood grain. So what we're going to do now is mix this with another noise texture. So I'm going to go ahead and get another noise texture here, and we'll plop that right there, bring detail down to 0, roughness down to 0, Keep the scale at five and we'll give a distortion of two as well. So now we're getting this wood grain kind of contrasted effect, but we do kind of want to mix these two together because I'm going to add a color ramp here. So we're going to go ahead and get in a mix RGB so we can bypass this noise texture. So we'll plug the factor into the color two, which will allow us to bypass this noise texture. I'm going to highlight these guys and hit G to move them back because I do want to add a color ramp to expound on this noise texture here. So I'm going to go ahead, shift A, search, get a color ramp. And then what we're going to do here is bring in the contrast of this particular noise texture. And then we're going to be able to pull out a lot of detail and a lot of contrast in this. Then we can bring the factor to something like right here and we'll play with that more as we go. What we're going to do now here is in the mapping node, we're going to go ahead and just squish it in so we get that stretching, squishing wood effect that we really want. Now, if you wanted to actually rotate the material so it's instead of stretching this way, you stretch it that way, you could just go ahead and stretch it that way. Um, let's see right here. You could go ahead and stretch it that way, but there's still a lack of control there. So what you can do is just shift A, get another mapping node plug it right there, and then you can go ahead and rotate the texture as you want to. So that's really nice. So you can just put another mapping node there. It's kind of a weird way to do it, but it works because it's not going to rotate here. All right, so let's go ahead and start working on our color. So the my rule of thumb is when I'm working with these text, um, with the color for the wood, there's a pattern. It's basically dark texture, medium, very light, and then a dark texture again, or a medium texture. So I'm going to go and get in a light kind of tan. So something right about there, I'm eyeballing this. I suggest using something like Photoshop or another tool that has a color picker. Get a picture of some wood and get those exact colors out of the wood because it is very, very important to get your color right for wood textures. Because if you don't get the color right, it's gonna look like Play-Doh or something weird. So getting more accurate colors. I've done this a couple times while working on this tutorial, so I kind of have it figured out. Otherwise, I would be using a color picker as well. So I would suggest doing that. All right, so now we have this. I'm going to bring this color here. I'm going to get another color, which is going to be the mid color, which is nice when you hit the plus icon on the color ramp. It already gives you a mid color, but I'm going to bring it down. So something like this. So we're already getting a pretty good wood. Um, and then let's go and I'm going to click on him. I'm going to hit the plus icon and I'm going to bring him here. So what we're doing is we're really just trying to grab as much detail and color out of this wood as we can. So we can bring this in like that. I want to get as much of the dark kind of colors in here, something like this. So now we have a lot of detail, a lot of grain, and then we can go ahead and play with what we're getting here by playing with the scale of the noise texture, scale of everything even expounding on how dark this dark color is. So something like that, and we can bring it in. So there we go. So now we have some pretty good wood. 
maybe even bringing this. So it's really just expounding on these and trying to grab detail, trying to grab color. And we have a pretty contrasty wood, which actually maybe this color is too bright. Let's bring that down. Okay, so the next part in order to sell the effect that it looks like wood is through bump and roughness. So let's go ahead and get a bump node, shift A, search, get a color ramp, plug it there. We're gonna plug this mix into the color ramp, plug the color into the height, and the bump into the normal. So now everything's bumping, which looks really bad. So we're gonna take this color ramp, use the white portion of it. So we want the lightest portions of the wood to flatten out something like that. So now we have a way better looking wood just from flattening some stuff out and adding a bump. And I'm gonna go ahead and see how this looks in cycles. So it looks really good. I'm really just trying to check how the bump looks here in cycles. So now let's go ahead and get roughness going really quickly. So I'm just gonna highlight these guys here. Go way up here, because this is really gonna control everything. So I wanna have some space. And then we're gonna go ahead and get in another color ramp to control roughness. So I'll plug this, straight the color ramp, I missed. Plug it there, color ramp goes in the roughness here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in and then bring this in like this bring this color up so it's less shiny. We don't want all that shine. And then you can kind of look at the reflections here and start adjusting. And the next thing is to really sell the effect of wood is bring your specular down a little bit so it's a little more absorbative, if that's a word. I think absorbative is a word. Um, so here we have our wood. Now again, it doesn't look quite right. That's because of my color picking. I I would go back and really try to hone in on my color. Other than that, this is looking really good. Let's go ahead and dive into the moss. So we have all of this craziness right up here. I'm just gonna move it around for organizational purposes. So let's go ahead, move this output and get in a mix shader. So I'm gonna click on the principle, hit shift D to duplicate it, plug it there. Now this order is really important. Make sure this moss principled, that's going to be the moss, is on this bottom shader here. So I'm gonna plug this right up here. And then we're gonna go ahead and get in a color ramp for here. Get in a noise texture here. We're gonna get another texture setup. So I'm gonna hit Control T, mapping, texture coordinate, plug it there, and plug the noise texture here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just plug that straight into the factor. Okay, so now that we have this, we're gonna go ahead and start moving that color ramp in to start working on that. I'm actually gonna to go here to B spline to make the gradient smoother so the moss looks more smooth. So we're gonna bring this in here just like that. So this is our moss basically. Let's go ahead and work on the color for it. So we're gonna get another color ramp. Tons of color ramps here, but the color ramps rule when it comes to making materials and getting color right. So we're gonna plug the factor of the noise texture into the color ramp so we can pull from this noise texture to get color data. Now what we can start doing is getting some color into here. And so let's go ahead and make this a nice green. Maybe actually the green needs to be toward the yellow because that's kind of what looks more natural. And then we're gonna go here and get a super dark version of that green here. And then we can start pulling it in and then we'll want a mid color of that green as well. So that needs to be a little bit more dark. So we'll pull this down to the middle here. Now it looks terrible and that's because we do need to get a bump node. This bump node is really gonna start making it look like moss. So let's plug, actually we'll get another color ramp here just to be able to control the mound height, which, which is what I'm gonna call it. Plug the noise into there, color into the height and the bump into the normal. Okay, so now we have this. Let's go ahead and start getting the detail to 12 and our roughness pretty high up. Look at that, it already looks like moss. That roughness is really gonna flatten it out. And then um, we need to start getting darker colors here. So we'll go to something like here and we'll pull this in like that. Pull this in for a top end highlight. And then there we go. Still way, Still way too bright. So we'll go ahead and then bring this over this direction, bring it a little darker. And then we can also kind of bring in 
the bump. Ah, that didn't really do anything, but, and then we can kind of bring our mixing in here so we can get a better looking moss. Bring this in like that. And there we go. We have a natural looking moss right on top of our wood. Kind of make it bigger a little bit better. And there we go. We have created a mossy wood material with all of these nodes. Thank you guys for checking that out. I hope you learned some stuff. If you are interested in procedural materials and using them, I have a pack of 200 procedural materials. It has stuff ranging from procedural marble to stucco to asphalt and tons of other things. If you want to check that out, it's called the real time materials that is linked in the description. If you want to grab that, that would be really great for supporting the channel. Again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.